So I was caught speeding on the Isle of Wight. I was doing 37 miles an hour in a 30 zone and I was snapped by a mobile speed camera. Now I consider myself a fairly careful driver, so I was quite embarrassed by this and that's why I'm sharing this with you, the viewers. It might help you uh, become a safer driver, uh, but it will certainly help me reinforce what I've learned. So the speed awareness course is offered by the police as an alternative to points on your license and of course a fine. They give you three options in the letter they send you. Uh, that's the speed awareness course, fixed penalties and a point, and you can of course go all uh, rumble of the bailey and go for a court hearing to contest uh, the camera. Hampshire Constabulary give you some guidance on who's offered speed awareness courses and it depends obviously on how many miles per hour you were doing. I chose the online course run by DriveTech. It costs £93 which of course ironically is about the same as the fine you would get but of course you get no points on your license. It was a Microsoft Teams meeting uh, which means that you can use your phone, your tablet, your PC or your Mac as long as obviously it's got a camera and microphones and speakers. There are about nine people online with me. I needed to show some ID. Uh, they obviously driving license is probably the easiest. I couldn't record it, couldn't video it, but I could make some notes. So I'm sharing uh, what I learned from those notes. It started with people sharing their reasons for speeding. Now, Obviously, there can be lots of reasons people are speeding, they're late for work, they're having an argument, someone was arguing with their boss. My reason really was the lack of attention. I was looking at the scenery. They show you four pictures and we're asked to say what the speed limit is. It's four pictures of a road, incidentally. And I'm embarrassed to say I only got two out of four right. The big learning from this is street lights in a built up area generally mean 30 miles an hour, unless it's shown otherwise. Now, speed limit shown in a red circle is legally enforceable. A small repeater sign you'll often see. These are the tiny little signs about, about that big. Uh, you'll see those in the zones, but you'll also see larger gateway signs where there's a change of speed limit. Now, triangles with speed limits are advisory, uh, so you might see those on 20 mile an hour zones. Another um, exercise was saying what a dual carriageway is. Now, a dual carriageway is obviously where you've got a barrier between the two carriageways. Carriageways going one way, carriageways going the other. And uh, the rule is if you can't get a wheelbarrow across the, the crash barrier, it's a dual carriageway and the national speed limit applies, unless, of course, shown otherwise. Now, one thing they wanted us to do was to talk about what possible effects the points and uh, prosecution might have on uh, your, your, uh, your, ourselves personally. So jobs and insurance. And uh, there's obviously the, uh, the embarrassment fact, which, of course, I'm feeling a little bit now when sharing with you me getting speeded, uh, getting caught speeding. The other thing which was a bit of an eye opener was the difference one mile an hour can make to your speed. Now they showed a video of a car doing 30 miles an hour under sort of, you know, on an airfield type, top gear type thing. And uh, it stopped in time just before some boxes. Obviously they placed the boxes at, the, at 23 meters. And uh, they then re-ran the video and said, what difference would one mile an hour make? Now the car of course went into the boxes but the point was that the car was still doing eight miles an hour when it hit the boxes so the difference one mile an hour can make if you hit someone or something could be quite big the other thing i, I learned was the risk of fatalities so if you hit someone at 30 miles an hour there's a 10 percent chance you're going to kill them and that risk increases to a hundred percent if you hit them at 70 miles an hour last year 1,721 people were killed on the roads in the UK. 25,208 were seriously injured. Now, only 5% of those accidents occurred on motorways. However, 33% occurred on rural roads and a massive 62% in urban areas. A big factor with speeding or people getting caught speeding is so-called speed creep. And that happens with me if the road surface is quite smooth and I don't really notice my speed creeping up. And I think that's what happened to me on the Isle of Wight. We were in a 40 mile an hour zone. The roads were fairly smooth and I carried on basically almost at 40 miles an hour. We talked about ways of limiting your, our speed uh, and 
cruise control is a good one. I, I, I use cruise control. Um, some vehicles are fit with, fitted with speed limiters. And the other thing, again, for me, is using the sat-nav. Uh, previously, until I got caught speeding, um, it beeps when you're in a 13 mile, just a single beep, and it beeps for uh, narrow roads and, and uh, curves and all sorts of things. So it was continually beeping. But you can change it so that the beep goes on continuously. So when you're sat in a thirty, when you're in a thirty mile an hour zone, you'll hear my sat nav from now on beeping continuously, uh, and that's a reminder that you're still in a thirty mile an hour zone. Stress can also be a factor with speeding. Uh, people arguing uh, in the car or on the phone or whatever. Also being late. Um, one tactic really if you're being late is uh, uh, is to pull over and make a phone call and say you're delayed. Don't say you're late, say you're delayed. Uh, and you'll never hear train companies talking about the train is running late. They'll always say the train is delayed and it sounds better basically to say you're delayed rather than you're late. And that takes the pressure off. If you're going to be late, you're going to be late, aren't you? And the other big thing is driving to the conditions, not the speed limit. They showed a picture of a road with a 40 mile an hour speed limit on it, but it was covered in snow. And the question, of course, is would you drive at 40 miles an hour on in those conditions? Well, of course, you wouldn't. But it really is thinking about what the conditions are and what speed you should be doing rather than sticking at the limit. We did some hazard perception tests. They, show us a, they showed us a few pictures in an urban area where there's obviously a lot going on and it had to go around the group to spot the hazards. Um, on the first go round, I was last to go. So I was really sort of struggling to actually uh, find any, any hazards. But on the next go round, I actually uh, went first. So it's a lot easier. But yeah, it's looking for hazards as you're driving. And that's important. Another thing that's important is keeping a safety uh, buffer between you and the vehicles ahead of you. You should keep a two second gap uh, between it and uh, there are a number of ways of counting the two second gap and there's a, a, a rhyme that goes only a fool breaks the two second rule which takes about two seconds to, to say. So you look at a, a lamppost or something and check that you're two seconds behind the vehicle in front. That safety zone is important because obviously if something happens to the vehicle in front, you need the time to stop. We also talked about you know people tailgating you and that and, and jumping into your um, your safety zone. Well, the simple answer is if someone is really tailgating you, then let them pass, pull over to a lay by, get them past you. Or if they do overtake you and go into your safety zone, don't speed up because you're annoyed. Just create the safety zone. It's not going to make a lot of difference to how late you're going to be when you finally get to your destination. You're talking about seconds, but you could be you could be endangering your life by closing that gap again. We were asked to make a, an action plan, uh, and the action plan obviously is admitting that you got caught speeding. So I got caught speeding. I wasn't concentrating. That was the, the real reason. I was looking at the scenery. So what I'm going to do about it, I was going to keep the beeps on on the sat nav so you'll hear them beeping. I'm also going to watch out for the countdown markers. You know, you get these little chevron countdown markers as you enter a different uh, different zone. I'm going to make sure I slow down in time. With an action plan, there's always, uh, you know, what are you going to do to stop your backsliding, as it were. Now, I'm going to ask Jenny, I'm going to ask the viewers to keep an eye on me uh, so I don't drift it back into bad habits. And also... From now on, you won't see us looking at the camera as we're driving. Um, we will be talking when we're driving, but it's too distracting to have a camera in the vehicle and to look at it when we're driving. Um, you know, you can be looking at the camera, keep looking at that, and, and then, you, you know, your concentration is going. I will keep my eyes on the road and uh, keep concentrating on the driving. We're still going to chat as we're driving, but it is eyes on the road. So that's it for this little confessional video. I hope you found it interesting. And if you did, you might want to share uh, any experience you've had about being caught speeding or avoiding speed, getting caught speeding, or more importantly, and uh, any comments you might like to have, uh, please let us know. I appreciate to, to hear what you have to say. If you found this useful, you know, give us a thumbs up. And if I'm already please consider subscribing. So we'll see you soon. Bye then.